Hello, I'm Azim Azar, and welcome to Really Possible from Elastic. Today, I'm at the London AI Summit, talking to thought leaders about artificial intelligence. What are they excited about? What are they hoping it can do for them? And how are they going to get there? Generative AI has been like a shot of caffeine to the tech industry, but to businesses at large. What can it do for companies? What's really exciting for me about generative AI is not actually the ability to create content. It's the ability to represent how people perceive content. It's something that we call audience brain. So if I show you an ad or a policy or a promotional material, historically, I didn't know what goes in your minds and bodies. Um, unless you ask people and people are not very good at reporting on what goes in their minds and bodies. But the first time ever we can recreate those signals uh, that go on inside and we can use those to then create better content, but also now predict activation, uh, which I think is a really exciting um, uh, unlocking of this, um, this potential. I want to dig into that. So does that mean that you are able to use generative AI to create a simulation of all of a company's potential customers and, and test your messages and your products against those simulations. Is that what, you, what you're saying? Exactly that. And, uh, and so that's really what it, it's unlocked. I think historically what we tried to do is, in, in, at least in media marketing communications, is try to predict activation, clicks like sales from pixels, from words, from mm -hmm. images. But there's a whole load of information that's missing, which is what goes on in, in people's um, minds and bodies. And now the trick is what is the data that you need to represent an audience? It's not names, addresses, dates of birth. It's it's how well your football team played at the weekend. It's whether you've just fallen in love, how much money you have in your account, whether the time of the day. So really understanding the data that you need to represent an audience is, is the trick. D data is crucial. One of the things that I've discovered is that I will use these technologies and I will get two or three days worth of work done before lunchtime. I realize that my team doesn't have the capacity to take the work that I have done and, and process it. And I think you could magnify that up to uh, organizations. They start to layer AI over their existing capabilities, their data and their people, and they find this productivity boom. They'll need to reach into their imaginations to say, how do we deal with this abundance we previously hadn't been able to put our hands around? So I think you know, what we're gonna start to see is specialist AIs that take on certain roles, they're able to go and do things for us. Rather than just something that we communicate with, actually going to be able to give something that's specialized to be able to go and do something for us. That agentic model, whether it be you know people or, or agents, will actually I think, supercharge our ability to get things done rather than just you know, improve our own thinking. What do you think AI could do for you in the next couple of years? I'm super excited. I think we're not far off from large action models in consumer applications. And I'm super excited um, by, you know, using uh, these models to solve like the arduous tasks in my life. Like I'm, I've, I'm currently buying a lot of furniture and you're faced with this challenge. Was, Am I going to scroll eBay for hours to find a table with the right dimensions? I said, no, <laughs> I'm not right. going to do that. I, an LLM agent, a large action model could do that trivially. You know, just search, find all the right tables, check the dimensions, find the ones with the fit the space the best. I mean, there's just millions of problems like that. Helping me shop better. Now we are really, <laughs> really <laughs> talking. Many organizations now have a, a lot of data that they can start to apply uh, more traditional and newer uh, AI uh, tools to that data. How should they think about the kinds of innovations this could allow them to bring to their customers? Once you have an organization that has aligned on what are the numbers that we are trying to make go up. Mm -hmm. uh, often once you get to the point of working at, with a publicly traded company, for example, you've aligned on what are the success metrics that we're going to be reporting out. So if you have an organization which has gotten to that level of KPI mindset that there's internal alignment about what are the numbers that we use to quantify success, then you have the opportunity to leverage software engineering, digital product thinking, and eventually stochastic optimization, which means you have to have some data available to you in order to make those numbers go up. But the, the tech, which is exciting, I will admit, um, is not the hardest nugget there, right. right? The hardest nugget is 
alignment and the set of ideas, and then the people who are going to uh, be bold and innovative. As they say, it's really people and then ideas and then things in that order. I can tell that the light is already shining from your eyes over the possibilities of AI. When you look out over the next two years, what are you most excited about? What is going to be possible? What if, in this video that we're showing this robot, um, we could ask a Gen AI engine, what is in this picture? The Gen AI engine could say, well, there's a table and there's a glass and, and the glass is half full. Um, and then we could ask another language model, what is a glass and what, what do I need to know about glasses? Well, you need to know that they hold liquid and, uh, and well, how do I hold them? And you start having this, this, this interrogation of the world through a language model for a robot that before could barely move to hold the glass and you had to do all these difficult things. But in future, we might be in a position where we can say, but what I need you to do is just safely take that glass and put it in another surface over there. And this robot might be able to reason through that problem and say, well, I, I understand the abstract, the abstract that you wanted over there, and I'm gonna move it over there with all the degrees of freedom that that means. When you look out over the next two years, how will the enterprise look different? So if you think about it today, everybody's starting to build these units of, of use, right? We're gonna to have to start having little layers that learn how we've used these things together in the past and can apply that learning to a problem that comes in and says, well, thank you very much for this abstract problem. Well, you, well, clearly it's made up of a document that's coming in and a customer that needs something. So I'm gonna go and call the little agent that's dealing with the triage. It's gonna give me something from that document. Then I'm gonna to go to the little agent that's dealing with complaints and it's gonna give me a little bit and I'm gonna resolve that and I'm gonna answer this question from Mr. Customer. Entirely reasonable to think that we're gonna be there in the next three years. And what will you and I do then? Well, we'll manage the traffic with our magic wand. Um, interestingly, in my estimation, none of this changes anybody's day job because frankly, nobody wants to sit there opening letters every day or looking at you know, digital letters. Uh, and what we want to do is when the triage problem becomes interesting enough that it requires for us to actually solve something and delight the customer, for example, we're always going to be there in that need. Find out what's really possible for your business with Search AI. Learn more at explore.elastic.co.